In today's video, I dive deep into the woods to show how I find macro photos just like these. Welcome to the Blair Adam Country Park in Fife, about 40 minutes north of my home in Edinburgh. It's a huge area with footpaths and woodland that offers endless opportunities for macro photos. But with so much to see, finding those tiny macro scenes can be a challenge. I'm in a bit of an area of undergrowth. Obviously lots of trees around, we've got loads of mosses, there's leaf litter, there's pine cones, there's all kinds of things on the ground. And I've often found that spots like this are great places to find macro photos. So it does involve, when you find these areas, really slowing down, spending some time actually focusing up on these tiny little details. This little stump here, it's all rotten, it's covered in lichen and bits of moss. Although here I'm not actually finding anything that I think is particularly worth shooting. But that's part of the game. Looking around, finding these little spots that you think might have some promise. And hey, even if you don't, you're spending a nice day exploring the woodland. And when's that ever a bad thing to do? Well, I'm not seeing anything right here, but something has just caught my eye a little further away. So let's go take a look. Mushrooms. These actually were quite prominent on the tree, so they definitely caught my eye when I was looking around over there. So again, it just goes to show how simply being more aware in your environment, taking that time to look around can really pay off. Now, when I see these normally, I often don't rush to take a photo because while I definitely think they look nice and obviously they're a great part of the natural environment, I don't find them especially photogenic and, and particularly for a macro photo because generally they're quite big. So getting a proper up close macro shot can be a little bit tricky, but I'm pretty confident I can get some kind of shots here, but I think I might play around with a, a few different variations and see what I can get. And I'm gonna start off with my camera off the tripod because just by holding it in my hand, it means I'm much more free to kind of move around the scene, experiment with compositions. And then when I've found a composition that I think is going to work, that's when I can then get my camera out, get my tripod out rather, set it up properly for a shot. Because it might be a little difficult to photograph. I think I'm struggling to put the whole mushroom into a scene, but by zooming in, instead focusing on the way that these elements overlap, we've got kind of one of the main caps here, we've got the second one coming up over here, and then we've got this smaller one in the middle. And I kind of really like how these elements line up here. I'm just gonna slightly refine it. But what I'm definitely gonna to have to do is focus stack, because of course right now, if I focus on this part of the cap, I took the photo, the rest of it is going to be out of focus, which I really don't want. So I'm gonna keep my settings at uh, f2.8, a hundredth of a second, but I'm gonna bring my ISO down just to ISO 320, it's looking a little bright. But I'm gonna use the focus bracketing tool in my camera. Now, this is something that the uh, R5 has. If you don't have an automatic focus bracket uh, tool, then you can just do this the manual way by taking a photo and turning your focus wheel and again and again and again until you have everything in focus. So don't think that just because you're using an older camera that might not have this tool that you can't do this because you absolutely can. So I'm going to set this 
at 40 shots, which may well be far too many, but I'd rather take more than I need. And I'm gonna set my autofocus point to the closest part in the scene, which I think is uh, right here on this tip. And I'm gonna set a two second timer just so that my hand isn't shaking the camera. And the camera should then move that focus throughout the scene and I can blend those together. I kind of like how that looks, but I'm not just going to take the one shot. I'm going to move my camera around a little bit and see if I can find any others that work for me. And that might mean moving the whole tripod. I quite like this, so I've really zoomed in close and I've actually created like an S curve with one of the uh, one of the mushrooms caps. So again, using my focus stacking. So if you are struggling to find images with things like bigger mushrooms or maybe it's textures and patterns that you feel that there should be a photo, don't hesitate to really use that macro lens to get up close and find these compositions that might be a little bit more abstract. So I popped on my 35mm macro, and I often really like using this lens, particularly when I want to show something that's a little bit bigger. Because obviously 35mm is a wider focal length than the 100mm, but because you can still focus right up close, it means you can get that macro shot, but you provide a lot more context of the wider environment that your subject is sitting in. So here, what I think it's going to let me do is get a full shot of the mushroom on the tree, nice and close up but keeping that context showing some of the woodland around it as well so you can see just how much more context we've got around the mushroom even though we're still only maybe seven inches from it i suppose arguably this is more of a close-up shot than a true macro but hey let's not mess around with semantics i'm going to go back into my focus bracketing turn that on i'm going to keep it at 40 images but I might need a few more this time because I'm actually going to bring that aperture to the widest that this lens will go, which is f1.8. Uh, I'm of course going to have to bring up that shutter speed. I'm going to knock my ISO down to 200. This looks like a great exposure. Um, again, I'm going to make sure that my focus point is set to right at the closest tip of the mushroom, which is just about here. And then that focus bracket should do its thing. Actually, while I've been uh, standing here chatting, notice that the sun has peaked out perfectly up in the trees. And by going low and looking up at the mushroom, get these great sort of light flares coming through. Looks like a really interesting shot. This might be a bit too low. Yeah, I think it definitely is. Okay, bring this up. Need to work quickly while the sun's in this position. I've got a lovely flare on the mushroom, which I really like. So I'm actually going to take two shots here. One, the one I've just done, f1.8. That gives a lovely out of focus bokeh with all the trees in the background. However, I think if I go right up to f13, bring my exposure right back to a thirteenth of a second, I can get a lovely sun flare starburst just coming off the top of that mushroom and in fact i reckon if i go to f16 i can make that even more prominent yeah i love that sun flare that's coming through so what i'm going to try and do is blend those two shots together use the out of focus f 1.8 version as my base layer and then just brush in that sun flare that we've taken at f16 so we get the best of both worlds we get the nice lovely shallow depth of field and we also get that flare that you get with a narrow aperture i really like how these look even just on the back of camera i'm trying a few different variations of my settings but for me this really goes to show the importance of 
really experimenting when you do find something that you can take a photo of because it'd be very easy to walk along this pathway see a mushroom like this and set your camera up take one shot consider it done and off you go to find the next but it's actually by spending a bit more time exploring the scene playing with your settings maybe playing with lens choice and certainly experimenting with the angles that you're using you can always come up with some different shots and while i've been standing talking I've seen one little shot. It's not great, but I want to take it anyway. I've seen this little pine cone just clearly fallen from above and it's just sort of stuck on these bits of leaf. Not bits of leaf, bits of twig. So I quite like that. I'm going to handhold this shot because that's all it needs. I'm going to go ISO 640 so I can get a really fast shutter speed because I'm handholding. Much more of a quick macro snap, this one, but still it tells a little bit of the story of the day and I quite like it. And actually here on the same little bit of dead tree, there's another mushroom. And I really like that we've got all this like carpet of green moss around it. We've got a, another twig that's branching off here. And so again, I think this is one that I really want to handhold so that I can get that twig in the foreground. I can get the camera close to that moss so that it really goes into a nice out of focus bokeh f1.8 focusing on the mushroom i really like that in this one little area i've just got three different subjects we've got mushroom on the old tree we've got this mushroom down here with the green mosses and then we've got the little pine cone there now, considering that this country park is absolutely gigantic and I could have been walking for miles and miles and miles and maybe not found anything. So by putting my camera back down and just taking that time to really look around, to start to notice those small details, that's when I started to get photos. I always like to look really close at some of the textures that you can find, particularly on old trees like this, because I did notice that on this bit of branch here, we've got this amazing obviously the bark itself but we've also got this great lichen we've got also the green moss that's giving various green tones there's various contrasts going on there as well i love how this looks but it really is going to involve getting super close up so i'm going to take my 35 mil off pop the 100 back on and see what i can get i love all the amazing texture that we've got here then and also the difference in colours we've got between the sort of pale lilac-y blue lichen and then the more emeraldy green moss beneath. I am going to do a focus stack here because I'm not going to be able to get all the shots that I need in one go, but I'm not going to need 30 shots. I reckon I'm just going to put it at 10. My autofocus is set to the closest point. I am going to turn the two second timer back on. And I'm not sure that was quite enough focus points. In fact, no, it was not. So let's do that again. That's the fun, isn't it, of getting it wrong. I'm going to do 30 then just to be safe. Always better when you're doing focus stack to take more photos than you need. Like that we kind of got almost a little circle here in the middle. past this tree and there were two elements that really caught my eye first of all we have got all this great bark amazing lines and textures we've also on this got what looks like two different at least colors if not types of lichen we've got one that's sort of a, a greeny gray and another one which is a really vivid orange it looks amazing the other element further down is this lovely vivid green moss i love that what we've got is a very defined line of where that moss is growing 
up. So there's definitely two shots that I want to get here. One that focuses a lot on finding a composition within this beautiful bark and this lovely orange lichen. And then I want to find another shot that actually focuses more along this line somewhere that blends both those elements. The contrast of the hard jagged uh, tree bark uh, against that lovely soft green moss. So I'm going to move my camera around, try and find some compositions that I think work. I'm going to tread carefully because right there is a big dog dirt and I don't want to step in it. So because all these textures are basically all quite abstract scenes, there is no one photo that's particularly standing out. And that means it's really good just to use the live view and sort of just cast your lens over the tree bark, over those textures, and just sort of see if any particular compositions start to stand out. Because you will find that different shots will appeal more than others, sort of depending on where certain lines end up lining up. Maybe there's like a little knot of wood that you could use more as a subject, as it were. But I found one that stands out for me, and it's because we've got these sort of craggy little bits that almost look like their own little islands. So I'm at f16 to maximise that focus, a fifth of a second, ISO th uh, 320, I'm tapping to focus. And hopefully because of that aperture, I won't need to focus stack this because I just quite like them as quick, easy shots. But I'm going to move the camera around, see if I can find any others that appeal. The more I move my camera around, the more I find shots that I really like. But it is also just a tree by the side of the pathway. 99% of people would just walk past this without giving it another look. But if you're looking for macro photos, have a look at the textures on bark. Have a look to find amazing colours in the lichen that's growing. Because when you get up close with that macro lens, suddenly you will find photos everywhere. Okay, so I'm going to bring the camera level down now so I can start to get some of these photos that bring in more of this moss down here. Because I just... I, the contrast between those two textures and colours. I'm going to try and find a good spot. Maybe something around here because we've got the green and we've got the orange. Now I don't want to get super close up here because I want to make sure that I'm leaving room to show that blend of the moss going into the wood. So it's not going to be a really tight macro shot. In fact, even that's a bit too close. Okay, that's enough of this tree. I'm going to keep on exploring. Now, of course, you can probably find macro photos in any part of an enormous wood. So, how do you see the wood for the trees? So I always like to explore felled logs just like these, particularly ones that have been down for some time. These ones have already been reclaimed by nature. They are covered in a beautiful blanket of moss. There will be decay on there. There'll be fungus growing. There will be mushrooms in the right times of year. So as a result, there's going to be all kinds of things that you can point a macro lens at. And actually, as I've been talking, it's not necessarily the most standout of photo, but it really did just catch my eye. So let's just take a look. So all I'm looking at here is a leaf, but it's a leaf that has clearly fallen on this log earlier in its life. The leaf isn't on top of the moss. The moss has actually started to grow around it. And I really like that, but I also really like that color contrast between the really sort of vivid orange of the leaf and the green of the moss. And that was what caught my eye in the first place. So I'm set up a pretty simple top-down shot here. I'm going to shoot this at f14 to try and maximise the sharpness. A 40th of a second for my shutter speed. And I can just tap to focus on the leaf. I'm actually going to go a little brighter, a 25th of a second. Super simple. It's just a leaf on some moss, but I really like it. been walking along the banks of the river and this is an amazing place because it actually used to be a site of big industry 
And this is one of the few bits that actually kind of speaks to that past because this is basically part of a bridge. There's a bit here and there's a bit on the other side of the river and that would have formed a connecting line. Now, I'm not trying to make this into a history channel, but my point is, is that what we've now got here is loads of amazing old exposed bricks. And a lot of them have still got the maker's stamp on them, but they've also weathered and worn and they've got mosses and lichen and all kinds of things growing all over them. All of which is again, great stuff for macro. So I'm gonna get my camera out, I'm gonna get the lens on, spend a little bit of time looking around some of these bricks and seeing if I can find an interesting composition for them. Now, as you can probably see, even though I'm 6'2", this is quite high. So it might be that I'm gonna to have to handhold some of this and just try and figure out how to get the shot that I want, but pretty confident that we can get something nice here. Now, because they are so high up, I am gonna be handholding the camera probably like this. So I'm gonna make sure that my stabilizer is on and autofocus is on, and that should really help. Now, the shot I'm actually gonna start out with is basically the same shot that I did when I took some B-roll before I started uh, taking my photos, because I really, really like, it's a square onto the bricks, we get them in some lovely lines, we can see the Blair Adam uh, stamp on them, and I think it's a really great little scene. No, it's not really macro, because I'm gonna be backing up quite a long way to about here. As you can see, I am holding this really quite high, but I'm trying to get very much face on to the bricks. And obviously they are quite high. If I take it from down here, we're gonna be looking up at them and I wanna be looking straight on. Yes, that looks nice. Okay, now I'm gonna start getting a little bit closer and finding some more intimate scenes. Again, this isn't really gonna be macro, but I love this little trio of bricks because the one in the middle in particular has got uh, a lot of a lot of stuff on it a lot of lichen and mosses and molds and stuff and I could get closer still something more like this like that one because I had a lovely crack going through it but maybe I could also do that vertically slightly further away filling the frame again these ones aren't really macro they're more close up but a lot of people sometimes get a little bit moody with me when I call things macro and they're not, but I think we can agree it's within the same ballpark. We're talking about close-ups on details. And I love getting close-ups on details like this. Just zooming in on the details to check that it actually is sharp, because it's really quite dim under here at this point in the day. So. I have to ramp my ISO up to ISO 1000 and I'm at F6.3 in order to try and get more of it in focus. And that's meaning that I'm having to use a shutter speed of a hundredth of a second, which is fine, but because I'm hand holding, it could be a little bit blurry, even with the stabilizer. So I'm just trying to be careful. I've got these four bricks and they look great so i'm snapping away i'm taking lots of shots while my hands are up to try and maximize my chances of one of them working and i think those look pretty good actually my skeleton is not used to being stretched like this there is a little bit of greenery poking out of a couple of places and it's nice but it's not especially vibrant unfortunately it would be nice if there was actually maybe like a little flower coming out or something like that this little green fir leaf is as good as it gets really so i'm putting this into a vertical composition right now and the fern is sort of in the upper left of the frame and i like that because we've got the contrast of some of the 
the blackened bricks that have clearly sort of worn away over the years and then the ones with the Blair Adams stamp as well. So yeah, I like that. I've got a few there that I'm quite pleased with. Right. I really hope it's been useful to see how I would go about finding macro images in such a vast landscape like this. To be honest, I am really pleased with some of the shots I've got. It's definitely been worth spending the time and effort coming out here. But these are just some of the tips that I like to keep in mind on days like this when I'm looking for macro photos. There are, of course, many ways of finding macro shots. And if you've got some of your preferred methods, please do leave those in the comments below. But that brings me to an end of today's video. If you've enjoyed it, then do please hit that like button. And of course, consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already. And I will see you next time.